Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on Black Forest and I'm going to be playing with the new 35th Air Assault Brigade. This replay was a good opportunity for me to show off a lot of the new units that are available in this division. I think in the last gameplay that I did with these it was a little bit difficult for me to show things off because it was so short I got absolutely wrecked and uh, just in general I wasn't really zooming in too much so what I'm going to try and do today we're going to zoom in more on the on the new units and I'm also going to kind of discuss I guess uh, what I think about the new units and how they perform and so on and so forth but let's have a quick look at the deployment so I do have the Desan Niki Metis here I've got the Desan with the AT 5mm AT gun in tow and uh, then we've got the Sapudi RPO here. And then there's going to be some Desan Igler in these BTRs with the Stresets on top. So the ZU-23-2 hanging out on top of those, which is very, very cool. I've also got an MI-8MT, the Rocket 3 variant at the start, and four squads of the Spesnaz group. So the Desan Niki here, these are actually really strong squads at the moment. I think the Metis launcher is pretty nice for taking on sort of light and medium armor. It's, they're great for one-shotting APCs like Marders and Bradleys. And they can also do some serious damage to Leopards as well at range, like Leopard 1A5s and the Leopard 1A1s, for example. But otherwise, you know, it gets heavier targets, they're not going to do much damage. But they can obviously side shot targets so that will hurt as well so in general the desan niki meta is really good for helping control enemy armor and i'm going to be spreading out a bunch of those early on to provide sort of presence over the open ground then i've got the uh spesnaz gru here these are going to be landing forwards you can see wooden box has got the st stinger Cobra here that's going for the MI2s. I was really lucky to have him actually miss all but the last stinger. And whilst the last stinger does manage to hit both of these and stun them, it's not too much of a big deal because I'm still going to be able to land and I should be perfectly okay as long as the uh, 20 mil there doesn't end up shooting me down. Also, I think the Heavy Hog here wasted a lot of its 127 mils on my transports. So the Descent Sapodi RPO here didn't really lose too much. But they are getting kind of wrecked at a distance and they aren't in range to fire their RPO launches. So that wasn't ideal. But zooming up the Skuzet here to engage the Heavy Hog. These are really cool. And they're really quite strong actually. They're great for like area denial for helicopters. And they're also good for pinning down infantry pretty fast. I'm at MI8 here, going to get stunned and shot down by the Avenger early on. The rest of my MI2s, though, they're going to be going home and selling. Uh, so I can get the points back for them, because each one of these helicopters is a solid 50 points. So might as well get my money back. And the last Spesnaz does take a little while to, to land here, but finally I get it down. These Spesnaz squads are actually pretty damn good. Uh, with the AS Bows, with the VSS... They can do a ton of damage to enemy infantry squads, and you can see I'm evaporating the airborne here out in the open. Something to bear in mind, though, is I believe the infantry damage is a little bit broken with this patch. So infantry is evaporating very quickly again, like it was before. I actually wasn't aware of that until just recently. Um, but yeah, apparently that's the case. That's why everything dies so quickly at the moment in the current patch <laughs> regardless uh, my spetsnaz did very well in this game and currently we've got two here uh, i've got the one back here that i'm going to be jumping out of the building and then i've also got the spetsnaz down here that are now moving into the forest f111f coming in with the napalm is gonna not be able to get the kill onto the spetsnaz since i'd already moved so that was good and I do unload these Iglers and I'm going to move the Skrezzets up on that side. I guess one problem that the ZU-23 does have is that its range versus helicopters is actually only 1,765. Which means that there are weapon systems that can outrange them quite easily. 
Uh, so you do kind of need to play them close to your chest, like keep them in towns where they're, they're short line of sight, also in forests and stuff, and then like sneak up on the enemy helicopters if you want to take them out. But at the start here, things are relatively quiet. My AT guns are chilling in position, waiting for any transport snipes or cheeky side shots onto armored targets. We got the Metis squads ready and waiting to engage any armor that might push out in the open. And then I've also got more infantry on the way, so the Descent Pulimachiki, which do have the triple machine guns. And I've also got some of these Descent UAZ Conkers on the way, which are great for, again, controlling the open ground. They have a bit better penetration than the Metis, like two more. And that can make a pretty big difference against like heavier armored targets in the side armor. But meanwhile, the AS Val and the VSS engaging the gunners. These do have silenced weapons, you can't even hear them firing. They absolutely demolish the gunners there. And meanwhile, my opponent, oh sorry, not my opponent, my <laughs> teammate, <laughs> Test, is engaging with a bunch of these TATUs. He's playing the 79th Guard. Got these all bunched up with his Tunguska. I'm gonna admit, probably not the best way to do this. Like the TATUK supporting maybe one of the TATUs is okay if you wanted to use the veterancy there. But it just kind of makes you vulnerable to cluster. And, well, would you look at that? It's an F-111F cluster plane. We are going to shoot it down, thanks to the Skrezets, thanks to the Iglers. But it's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to kill the Tunguska that was actually there. As well as take the TATUK down to one health. So, yeah, the TATU is going to have to do a bit of a runner. I brought up my own T-80 to help cover this road and uh, my Conkers are now getting into position. Meanwhile, Test is bringing up some of these BMP-1s with the Mojotroki Metis. And yeah, Mojotroki Metis is pretty, pretty similar to Desaniki Metis with the 6 AKS 74s there in the RPKs. Things are pretty even. But the thing is with this map is even if things are even, technically, blue sides is always at an advantage here because they're on the edge of our sector but we are not on the edge of their sector so they can easily kind of contest our sector whilst we have to put in more effort to be able to contest theirs since the way that this like map's laid out I'm not a huge fan of the sectors on this map i think i've mentioned it before it's, it's really not one of my favorite maps but i thought i'd give it another go and uh, i kind of regret it throughout this game <laughs> either way <laughs> there's some Niki coming in these are actually in bmd2s which have the 30 mil cannons. So it turned out that these were pretty decent. I actually really like auto cannons in this patch. They are much better than they used to be. And particularly against infantry at the moment, these sort of auto cannon armored cars or APCs are very, very good. And they can really rip to, to pieces squads in the open. Uh, Spetsnaz here going to be hit by the indirect grenade launchers of the Humvees. <laughs> that wasn't fun. We're going to have to do a run up with the Spetsnaz there. But meanwhile, yeah, the Death Sarts getting into position and we're going to start firing at these mechanized rifles. And what I like about the BMD, it does seem to fire slowly. That's not necessarily a bad thing because it does seem relatively accurate. I th bear in mind that this is a unit in heavy cover. These BMD-2s ripped that squad pretty hard. Took them down to two men in quick succession. And you can see even these gunners are going to get taken out really fast. There was only two left in that squad though. And then there's these units that are getting smashed as well. Yeah, the BMD-2s really impressed me there. Particularly since I was against units in heavy cover. And any time I was revealing the location of a unit, like this mechanized rifle, they're just getting absolutely demolished. And meanwhile, the squads are moving through the trees here to take care of the m 13s with their RPGs. Now, the RPGs do have 20 penetration on these. It's actually not too bad. But meanwhile, the Scrozette's going to be able to take down one of the heavy hogs. And we're going to be shooting the next one. I 
taking a lot of damage. Does get stunned. And is going to get shot down. Beautiful stuff. Looks really, really awesome. So I was actually kind of optimistic at this point in that we could maybe make some ground through the heavy cover here and potentially push a CV into center. But I do need to get take care of these M13A3 dragons. Now these dragon squads are actually... Well, Dragon M113s are actually kind of useful in this situation because the BMD2s don't do that much damage that quickly and therefore the HGM is generally able to land on target so the BMD dies. Now, I have brought in a couple of different types of artillery here. Well, all of the different types of artillery just to kind of show them off. I've got the 122 mil. Now this actually acted very much like normal artillery in the way that it landed. Then we have the Nona, that actually turned out to be a pretty shit mortar carrier. And then we have the Grad firing away its rockets. Pretty standard HE rocket launcher. Does do damage if it hits with a rocket directly, but otherwise really doesn't do too much. And in this case I was targeting these airborne as they were pushing into the town, as there's pretty much nothing here. And barely did anything. The Nonna, that's trying to focus down the uh, the dragon and also the building next to it, but only doing like one damage with pretty much direct hits. And the other thing about the Nonna that was pretty bad is that it only has 18 ammo. If it had more ammo, it would definitely be Something that's maybe more preferable and maybe in larger numbers they can actually be effective. Anyway, as I've been focusing on other things, my front line did kind of start get getting picked apart. My Desaniki BMD squads that were in here all died. The BMD2s all died as well. And now it's just my BMD1s left that I've brought in. And my Squazettes that are trying to shoot down the AH-1F again. But Tess... He's going to shoot that down with his Igla, so that's not too bad. And the other unit that I have here is in fact the Vasilex. These are apparently grenade launchers in theory. Nice skill there onto the Raven though. But what's interesting about them is they can do, they can fire really, really fast. So you can just like pinpoint accurate arty fire at stuff. It's pretty insane. Going to be doing a runner with these trucks. <laughs> I brought in some of these. Admittedly, these aren't very good. Uh, you're much better off just bringing in more Iglers with the BCR like this. These these are much better than these are because these only have five health, whereas these have ten. So much more useful against enemy aircraft and and, and even enemy infantry. So there you go. And you can see the Skrizzets are pretty quick to shoot at these uh, aircraft. Uh, BMD-1s helping pick off a few units. I've got the Spetsnaz now making a march forwards, hoping to finish off a bunch of these units. So, Toe 2 coming under fire, going to clean that up. Then I'm going to be focusing on the mechanized rifles in the middle of this building. Take them out. Take out the Stinger. And that was a really, really good set of kills. Jump in the building there for the time being. So overall, we're making pretty good progress here. It's just I'm worried, of course, about the airborne units that are on this left-hand side that I really can't do too much about. Like, I do have the Desan Sapuri RPO that have been holding the ground here with those napalm launchers. But... The only supply that I have is these, these uh, descent trucks. Admittedly, these probably aren't the best choice. I thought that they would be much more useful because, like, 250 supply obviously isn't much, but I thought they'd be a lot more useful because they can, like, help resupply at the start of a game. Oh, there's the grenade launchers, by the way. Look at those go. just took out two Avengers there. 
And I'm going to be targeting the Abrams. And these things, because they fire volleys of four, they do a very concentrated strike all at once. In this case, only enough to do one damage. So against tanks, you know, they're not the most effective. But in a situation where you're already engaging a tank, having those fire a volley at them will really help because it will lower cohesion and it also does a little bit of chip damage, which might be the difference between your tank being able to get the kill or not in one shot. So yeah, I, I do quite like these Vessel X at the moment. I don't know if they'll get nerfed. They might do. But at the moment, I feel like they're not too bad because the division really does need help in other ways. And this is one of the th one of the units that you can really use to gain an advantage, particularly in infantry engagements, which are almost always against you. The Humvees there again getting indirect fire with their grenade launchers, which was absolutely de decimating my desants. We're firing again with the rockets from the Grad. And the Grad doesn't have that many rockets. I think it has enough for like two barrages of 12. But with that done, I'm not going to be reloading that because it wasn't that effective. The only ones that I was considering reloading at this point was the Vessel X. Because the Nonna didn't really perform very well. The 122 was okay. But I just needed more of them if I was going to use them effectively. Uh, meanwhile, the test is going to be bringing in the Akatsaya back here. So I do have a bunch more of these BMD-2s. I actually genuinely think that these are okay. Like, they're not too bad. The BMD-1s, they're pretty trash. One thing that I think would be nice is maybe if the machine guns had a bit better range. Because they do have, like, three machine guns. They've got one in the turret. And then they've got one either side at the front. So they can put a lot of lead down range, that's for sure. But check out my spares test there. Getting absolutely destroyed. Mechanized rifles, though. Gonna get chipped just as much by the BMD-2s. And where would you look at that? They've snuck a CV into our uh, area here, which is annoying because there's not really much I can do about that. Since my infantry is pretty damn trash, I can't just like go through the forest and clean them out. I have to push out in the open. And at the moment, that's not really working out too well because I don't have much in the way of like heavy units to do that. Lovely cluster strike there by our opponent. <laughs> Do end up shooting down the F-111F, but that is going to be the Kub going down, the Euro, all three of the Akatsaya. And this is why you spread things out, guys. I now have six of these Vesselix, which means that the concentrated barrages are pretty insane. I'm just trying to kind of guess where the command is. And one thing I will say about these Vessel X, because they are so accurate, it actually means that even if a unit is moving slightly, you can very easily miss and not do any damage. Alright, Desant, Sapadi up, yo. Trying to get extra incendiary on target there. It's not quite working just yet. That's what the UAZ is here for. Unfortunately, the airborne unit just takes them out. I think also maybe they captured my desants here or my, my supply truck and it ended up like resupplying them, which is obviously not good. My desant Niki on that left side going to get demolished by air rifles. And it just kind of continues with the whole thing of, like, this division has pretty damn bad infantry. An MI-24K hanging about. And also see 
the SU-25 coming in for a strafing run onto the helicopters. I was using the MI-24K to keep an eye on them. I don't want to stay too close though, because if that recovers and fires at my MI-24, I'm going to lose out. This unfortunately misses, but I do have my Akula, which has now arrived, and they're going to be using that to try and shoot down the AH-1F, and I do succeed with the last missile. So, job well done. So, a bunch of flanking attempts coming around on the left-hand side now. And in general, our opponents just completely controlled this area. Like, as I mentioned, there's almost nothing we can do about this because our infantry is just so much worse. So the way that I've got to play this is kind of reveal things at a distance and then hit them with the vessel X in order to make ground. I could also potentially crutch onto the T-80s a little bit, but yeah, unfortunately, then just not as good as the M1s. And in this case, we just saw the two M1A1s coming down this road. The Spetsnaz here was actually really good at uh, spotting reinforcements. I managed to sneak it all the way back there quite early on. So here goes the Vasilex, and you'll see they're focusing down the airborne dragon there, and, well, just delete them. If your opponent doesn't move fast enough, you can just delete squads like that. It is pretty gross. And the nice thing about these, because they can do that, is they pay themselves off relatively quick. Like an airborne dragon unit's 55 points. You know, killing one almost pays off one of these vessel X. So they just got to kill like another few more of those and I'm quite happy. And one thing I have started to set up back here is more of the 122s. They're going to be firing off next to these trucks and also the good old MI-26 uh, supply helicopter this thing has a huge 6,000 supply and in this situation just perfect for resupplying the 122s and I'm also going to bring bringing up more and more of those to join that arty park let's take firing away again Looking for the kill onto the airborne. Doesn't quite find it, but Tess is going to finish them off. Now I have normal Spetsnaz arriving. And normal Spetsnaz, just like Spetsnaz grew, are pretty decent at close range due to the shorter range submachine gun that they can get. The AKSU 74 does do a decent amount of damage. They also have the RPG 29, which has a direct fire 21 penetration like AT, so that's really, really nice, but fortunately, both of my Iglers are going to get taken out there by the airborne units. My Spetsnaz are going to be trying to get into the buildings ASAP, and I'm going to want to try and deal with these airborne engineers as quickly as possible. So in this case, the Spetsnaz jump into the building, absolutely melt the airborne units out in the open there. And this MI-8 from Test, it, this was actually a game changer in this situation because it pinned down all of these airborne engineers. So, great job by my teammate to get the job done there. That's going to give us a little bit of breathing room. This Niki BMD going to be finding a little kill there as well. Do end up shooting down a little bird because on this left-hand side, we are being flanked. So, my MI-8 does go down, but... What I did manage to do with the Akula was I actually killed an Avenger over here. So what that meant was this push now pretty much doesn't have any support anymore. So I'm looking to just kill them all off. I'm just smashing them with the 12.7 mil and I've also got the Akula. Firing away with its 30 mil. Test is going to come in with his SG25 and his MI24. You wouldn't want to beat these infantry, I tell you that much. Like out in the open against these helicopters. This Yak B would be slicing them to pieces. 
Nissan Niki, BMD, just getting some light arms fire onto the M35. We, st we still haven't managed to find, however, the enemy command. That's one thing I'm still kind of looking for here. Like, I saw it come in at this point, and at the moment, I'm trying to use the opportunity to move up the Desan Niki BMD. But every time I just get close, like, I'm just not seeing anything. And I can't really move across the right-hand side. You can see there was, like, one, two, three M1 Abrams there. Conker's looking for cheeky shots, but did run out of ammo. And only did three damage in the process. M1A1 and the M1IP going to be killing off my unit there. Vessel X still trying to come into play. One thing I did notice about the Vessel X, they do seem pretty thirsty for supply. They've got these four Desan UAZs here. I'm <laughs> ready to resupply them. But yeah, in general, they do use up supply pretty fast just because of how much ammunition they fire with each volley. But my arty park is coming along nicely. Check that out. Very cool. I've also got all of my helicopters here landed. So that they can get more Iglers and more Age Gems, more rockets, all that good stuff, so that we can defend against any more pushes around the left hand side. Now we've got Fighting Falcons coming in. They are looking for the engagement onto the SU-25. And that's going to be one of those going down. AA takes down the F-16. I'll see how the SU-25 stays further back. Now, if I had more units like these Spetsnaz, then I might have been able to kind of push through the trees with the help of something like the Sapodi RPO. And in this case, just in such a predicament because I just can't seem to get value out of my infantry. I'm currently investing into a lot of artillery to kind of make up for that. But then artillery is kind of unreliable at best when it comes to doing damage at the moment. Like it's not really a safe bet. Like this is honestly very stupid. Like me bringing in this many artillery pieces, including the non I brought in earlier and the grad, like it's just a waste of points. Like the non S particularly went used up with ammo. The grad particularly went used up with ammo. Yeah, it's just not. It's just not good. Anyway, what you might notice is I'm kind of counterbattering a little bit at the moment because I want to get rid of any potential mortars. But look at these explosions. They are very similar to usual tube arty as opposed to something like mortars, and their spread is. A little bit more even, so I wasn't actually uh, too dismayed by by using them this time around. Even though generally they're not that effective. Uh, Kula is going to be trying to get some age of gems on target, but I do need to be careful of the double Avenger that's heading my way. Eagle though is going to get the kill. Ka50 Akula goes down. Avenger's going to take out one of my MI-24s and, well, I'm going to have to fall back and hope that I can kill the Avenger with my TATB. Because if I can take them out, then we can start harassing all of these Sheridans with the MI-24 and the KA-50. F-111 going to be going down there. I think it was just because they kept flying over all of these... ZU-23s, so they just take quite a lot of damage very quickly, particularly if they were trying to target this town, because they'd always have to come over the town and then probably turn to their left, which would bring them straight over the positioning of my AA. Now I'm trying a little bit different, something a bit different here. I'm bringing in loads of these Desant Sapoli RPOs. Instead of bringing them in sort of piecemeal, I'm bringing them in all at once. I'm really hoping that just, this just allows me to win some of these close range engagements because I've been really, really struggling up to this point against wooden boxes airborne infantry, which are super strong. And these airborne infantry are basically cheap mechanized rifles. Thankfully, testers have an MI-24 here, which is going to be helping with the problem a little bit. And that's going to allow the Desantza Paddy RPO to kill them off. Meanwhile on the left, Sheridans are getting popped. 
and the idea being that I'm just going to want to keep them at bay for now. There actually isn't really anything here that can stop them right now. I think my Akula, I moved it over here to avoid AA. I ended up just staying there for a little while. But it does also kind of protect my artillery. If tanks do come across here trying to engage this, I'm going to be able to just fire an HGM at them and probably kill them. Airborne unit getting absolutely slapped. And again, still hunting for that command in the corner of the sector. The ATBV though. Can it kill the Jaeger Aufklader? Yes, it can. Takes them out nicely. And meanwhile, the airborne engineers, they're making a play. Can we kill them off before they get too close? Managed to get one. And then the second one here, going to get close enough to get the satchel charge off. And that is pretty much all she wrote, I think, for the Spetsnaz there. I decided instead of going towards the airborne engineer after they reload, I might as well just try and continue pushing around the edge. So this is where one of these HGMs can come in handy. The Descent Conquers and then the two BRDM2s. Actually doing a decent chunk of money to the M1 Grand. M1 Abram, sorry, not Grand. <laughs> Wrong game. <laughs> Alright, managed to kill a Humvee grenade launcher. One of the grenade launchers. That's good. And, uh, well, got a little bit of a park here of UAZs. More MI2 is going to be backing off. Cause I did bring in more Spesnas. I've also got some more of these Pulemachiki. But a second command has now come into this point, and we are slowly but surely losing this game. There's actually only 8 minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock. So I do want to try and get a move on. But I feel like my teammate may have run out, run out of steam a little bit. He does have these Magistrauki here. But not too much happening at all. Spetsnaz trying their best to kill off the Vulcan ASAP because you don't want that firing at us. And then we have the F-111Fs coming in with bombing strikes onto the BMDs. And one of those is going to go down. I probably actually could have got away with running up here towards these MLRSs. That would have been really, really quite funny. <laughs> but, alas, I did not. I did finally spot the command on this side. So I'm trying to get the vessel X to pre-fire where the airborne engineers are going to go. Also, my Spetsnaz squad there did manage to get all the way up and just about got off stun. So that's going to make things a little bit easier for me to uh, deal with. I'm adjusting the fire position command. Try and work out where they're walking to so that the Vasilex can land on target. But since it stopped, I probably should have changed the shot there onto those targets. But I didn't. And I'm just going to bring down more smoke so that I can get some infantry close instead to potentially engage the airborne engineer leader. Meanwhile, all the Zapoli RPO are busy trying to dodge mortifier and in the process do end up getting absolutely wrecked by the enemy units here. Also, the T-80 UK here isn't going to be surviving against the M1A1. Do manage to get some decent hits onto the M1A1 Abrams on the right though. Just the last Conquers squad didn't go in. But there's a suddenly key Metis. Bang. Right in the side armor. And that is one of the reasons why these squads are really good. Now that's a lot of mortars. I definitely should have tried and uh, counter them a little bit sooner. Because basically what's ended up happening here is he's bought all of his mortars. And he's then tried to like click off the road or something. And then just clicked unload. And that's why they're all in this like, like long reinforcing line. There's still a plus one for them. 
A50 Akula still chilling. Gotta be really careful with this thing. As long as I'm not sure that they have fighters, I shouldn't really bring this in or use it. Because it is a very temperamental unit. If it can get one passed by a tornado, it can probably get one passed by a lot of aircraft with uh, limited anti air weapons. So my AT gun's now going to go down. Kind of spelling the beginning of the end. My MIA, at least, is going to get line of sight onto the enemy command. So that's a start. And, well, let's play up. Getting his M109 clip. M109's killed by my Conkers. Um, technically, if this has run out of ammo and you want to waste the enemy HGMs, this is actually not a terrible way to do so. But he did waste my HGMs regardless, which is going to make it difficult for me to attack the M1A1. I did end up opting for the MiG-27s with Napalm in order to try and kill this command. And I also sent off the MiG-21 to the left, try and hit here just in case. But we did end up hitting it. Bang on. And those are both going to be dead afterwards very quickly due to the amount of enemy planes there were. We are going to take out an Eagle. There is one more Eagle and the two Fighting Falcons. Loads of MiG-31s coming in. Just want to shoot down this Eagle. It's like the main thing that I want to do. There we go. We got it. Huzzah! Now the A-10. Are we going to grab that too? Yep. Down it goes. Mortifier. It's coming in heavily onto this town. I wanted to... I probably should have spread these a little bit more. That's for sure. But at this moment, things are a little dire. You know, there's not too much left in the deck. I've got the arty party trying to do its best. Like, whenever I see something that's annoying or whatever, I'm just going to be hitting it with artillery. All of this AA is a good choice. And in this case, we're actually targeting the mortars, so I'm trying to take those out. But another F-16 going to be destroyed. The double MiG coming in there, definitely helping out. Awesome. This game is so pretty when you see when you zoom in. I've also got the MiG-25 BM Seed aircraft. Can they get intercepted by two F-16 Fighting Falcons? I'm going to trade for one of those F-16s. And the second one's going to go down to my teammate Test. Unfortunately, I did lose my other MiG to the Chaparral's though. As it kind of like turned into the enemy initially and I had to turn it away. And whilst I was doing that, I kind of ran out of time. So that really sucked. And this thing is going to knock out one of my helicopters over here and that's going to force me to pull the Akula back I think that was the exceptional optics MI-24 actually I really really like the helicopter like the MI-24K is pretty good because it has the recon it needs to spot the infantry it wants to kill with its rockets so yeah F-111F not getting anywhere close with the Skrezets in the forest, so that worked out really nicely. But here comes more infantry, some more Desaniki Metis. And the artillery is firing away once again, but doing pretty much nothing. I kind of expected these to do at least a little bit more damage. But alas, what can you expect? Very bright when they fire. <laughs> Getting flashbanged. <laughs> I lost another unit here. That's going to lose his Rosvodka Heavy. At any point they can bring in another command and that's exactly what they're going to do. It's going to contest the sector again. And put them at a plus one. With one minute to go. So 850 points for them. 58 seconds till the end of the game. My cooler does manage to get a good shot onto the M1 IP. Hoping for more than one though. And I do manage to find it. 
But I don't think my Akulas did that badly this time. Like in the last video that I did with the 35th Air Assault, my Akulas just got killed so quickly. And one of my Akulas did go down, but not after it already helped save the left. And in this case, I think we've dealt with a lot of the air-to-air -air aircraft, or at least a lot of them are on cooldown. So this Akula is relatively safe for the time being. I did manage to get the Vessel X on target onto the command. So I managed to take that out. And now I'm going to be using the 122 mils to engage the enemy 107 mm mortars. If I had more ammo on my Vasilex, then I would probably do that instead, but the Vasilex were completely out by that point in the game. But at the end, 5, oh, sorry, 8,942 kills, 7,340 losses. Killed tons of aircraft throughout this one, but couldn't make the ground because any time I wanted to push like close range, their infantry win. So it's best nice guru. Going to be taking out quite a few units here. The Spetsnaz grew are really good and the normal Spetsnaz, but all of the Descent units, except for maybe the Descent Metis, just don't really seem worth it at the moment in terms of price. 85mm gun, killing plenty of transports and a couple of airborne units, exactly what you want to buy them for. And like placing them early on at the start really allows you to like ambush your opponent very nicely. This is a cooler. This is the one that I think got, got shot down. Oh no, I got the M1 IP Abrams, so that won't be the one. But it did manage to kill the ATAS and the Little Bird with the Abrams there, so that was very good. The Vesselex, killing some Recon and also the Command there. And this Akula, this is, this is the one that actually got shot down. I was dealing with a lot of the initial scouts that were coming over the uh, side and also killed the Avenger, which allowed the Mi-24K to go absolutely ham with its rockets. So that was really, really good. So I actually managed to kind of play this one much more like an airborne deck or like an air assault deck than in the previous game that I played. And it was really good fun. Um, I don't like this map at all. I think it's like really unbalanced and that's partially why I think that they won. But at the end of the day, fun game and uh, you know, we could have done better. So <laughs> it is what it is. That's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.